The Stedward Centre is the best rehab centre in the world without being a rehab centre. And as Canadians and as people that work in the centre, I know they don't like to boast about who they are, what they are and what they've accomplished, but someone has to do it for them because we really do need to let the world know the great contribution that we are making to the lives of people with disability. The Stedward Centre is a disability research centre in the Faculty of Phys Ed and Rec and we provide a ton of physical activity, motor skill development and sport programs for individuals experiencing disability in our community. Even since I was at the centre, it's broadened the sense of, of, of the clientele in terms of who they serve, but it's really about getting to the crux of it, I think getting people active. The participants that have come for 20 some years, they still speak to the philosophy and message that Dr. Stedward carries with him. Even though the Stedward Centre started in September of 1978, really the impetus for the centre was we were engaged in creating a, a national organisation of sport for athletes with a disability. We really didn't have any facility where people could train and at the time the faculty used to have its own library but we had to transfer the library and all the books and as soon as that happened I went into that room I just took it over you know because I thought it was easier to apologize and justify. Being situated within a university enabled us and afforded us the opportunity to do this work as a research centre within the Faculty of Physical Education and Recreation. I think it's our role as a research facility to ask the hard questions and ensure that all of our programming is grounded in empirical evidence. And what a great environment for people with disability to work in too, a, a healthy, young, vibrant institution. Back then, a very small facility um, with a very small client base. Our sports centre really very quickly became a health fitness centre for people just to try to improve their, uh, their life. We have five main programs at the Stedward Centre, the Adaptive Physical Activity Program for Adults, the Free to Be Me Program for Kids and Teens Experiencing Disability, the Community Exercise Transition Program, the Athlete Development Program for Parasport, and the Functional Electrical Stimulation Exercise Program. I don't even talk about ability versus disability. I just talk about their high performance athletes, period. Every high performance athlete was once in a hospital being absolutely frustrated and until they got an opportunity to reach their own maximum potential, they weren't going anywhere. For example, I thought after I lost my sight that I could never play hockey again, but you know, um, with blind hockey, the uh, they use a metal puck that's hollow with ball bearings in it so that everybody can hear it and uh, suddenly now I can, you know, I can play hockey again, which was a, a huge thing for me. So that I still train at a really high level, uh, I just have to do some exercises slightly different or uh, with a, some sort of a modification, but still I'm able to do a lot of them. The High Performance Training and Research Centre it creates a really unique environment because it's an Olympic training centre as well. you got a lot of athletes that are around here that are national team athletes and uh, university athletes. By bringing in uh, para-sport athletes, it really creates a dynamic training environment. So the Stedward has given me a lot of opportunity to help train for all these sports. Of course, I could try working out myself, but they have excellent programs and trainers and uh, facilities to basically make that all possible. They know like more adapted physical activities. Fitness opportunities have, have been a, a huge mainstay for me and just allowed me to kind of reconnect with with my childhood and with my you know with my sight. If you move your right foot over one to the left, there's an even bigger there you go that one. We had a very strong children's program back in 78, 79, 80 in those early years. And then for whatever reason, it started to drop off. But now to see the Free to Be Me become so successful for so many families, it's without words. Gary McPherson played that role of the executive director at the time. And he saw that with the children and youth, that that really brought this new sense of energy and it really supported the, the development of children into adulthood. The idea of bringing kids into the programs 
uh, really springboarded and, and being a board member at that time and, and for a number of years, I saw it grow immensely. Originally we called it the cage, primarily because of our location and this really creative, unique, dynamic place. So when I came in, I had it graffiti painted and some really fun exercise equipment and, and programming equipment put in. And the idea was that we create a space that we would provide opportunity for children, youth and families to become physically active in a non-clinical environment. Coming to the Butter Dome and seeing what it's like in the um, open hall there and spending time, you know, on the treadmill, the track, everything. I was about maybe nine or ten, I think. When he was a participant coming in for a he was just getting exposed to the whole realm of fitness. We needed help for fitness, and we needed a certain program, you know, that could help me. So physical literacy is, is really at the core of a lot of things that we do in FreeDBME. So we work with kids to enhance their physical competence and confidence. Um, in a wide range of environments. I opened the gate in June of 2005 and it was me and 25 participants and from there it just kind of snowballed. And what it showed was that there was a real community need because by the end of year two we had 250 children. We were working all day and all evening to run a variety of different programs. I think some of it's built to transition over. A lap pull down here is the same lap pull down you're going to find at your YMCA. To be honest, you're probably very physically literate to maneuver in here when it gets busy because there's stuff flying and people going everywhere. So I have a daughter, Laura, and she started with Free to Be Me when she was a little girl, around seven or eight. She wasn't successful in her community activities and she wanted to be physically active. The coaches and support people at uh, the Free to Be Me Centre knew how to accept her for what she was. I think she was going to be loud that day. Oh well, she's going to be loud that day. And that takes a lot of stress off a parent's shoulder when you know your child's not having a good day, is it going to be okay? Are they going to be able to go to this session, participate in this session? Yep, they were. She, she always participated regardless of how she showed up and it always ended up something positive. It brings a whole new idea of the clientele that could be served, the whole idea of inclusion, the whole idea of short-term programming and community transfer. Laura's benefited from it. She's met more people. And I think that even the individuals working with her, Philip and Stephanie, they, they've benefited by knowing her. When I first started, we had a huge waiting list. I inherited a waiting list of, I think it was a year and a half at the time, which is in my mind absolutely ridiculous. The facility was essentially bursting at the seams and weren't able to accommodate uh, all the demand. If we can teach them the skills that they need to perform, then there's no reason why they can't go to some of the other facilities in the city which are now being built with good accessibility. So the Stedward Centre in creating the Community Transition Program, we were able to offer a lot more access and it was wonderful because within a year of developing the program, the wait list was gone. So they started to identify and work with individuals here at the centre to develop those skills but then say, what else do you need to be active? Who do you want to participate with? Where in the city do you live? Some days it was hard to get there, but it was all worth it, so worth it. Now, yes, it's very convenient having Laura in her community because we're 10 minutes away from home. She can come here any time of the day with friends or with support workers, and it's part of her world, right? It's part of her community. People, I think, were, were very afraid to go out somewhere and I think that's a phenomenal work that Bobby Joe has done over the years where now she's she's removed some of that fear by working with community partners and working with the members themselves. Under the expertise of Dr. Donna Goodwin, the Stedward Centre was able to create a community exercise transition model and put dedicated supports to developing and implementing a community transition program. This program really focuses on four key components, individual readiness, community readiness, physical environment and community opportunities. 
and this model has been embedded in research right from the ground level. So we've had many different research studies and we're continuing to do research in that area. First, it was just kind of a, a wall up in front of me and uh, the Silver Center helped in initially uh, kind of break down and set up a program for me. And then uh, I moved on to the transition program and they helped me out that way too. And I come quite regularly, so. The individual readiness piece really starts directly here at the Stedward Center. We're working with individuals to assist them in developing the skills and confidence and supports that they need to be successful within a community environment. We continue to work on the individual readiness piece as well in the environment. These individuals that are coming through the program have a lot of opportunity to decide where they want to go and what their needs are basically in the community. So they decide and determine where they need us in the picture. Of course coming here now because I live, you know, minutes from here, like five minutes, and um, it's closer to this place. It's brand new. I just like it here at the Trilger Rec Center. I just love it here. In this facility here, uh, my nephew uses it on the other side to play basketball, and it's great. From volleyball, basketball, curling, tennis, every sport that we find within the facility um, now all ties into that group that fits within the transition program, really. I see so many people here. I just recognize them. I go like, hey, how's it going? Hey, what's up? It's not just a place to come and be active, it's a place as to where you can have significant social interaction. You notice that over time you become less and less a part of society, you know, and, and you go into your own little world. It's nice to have uh, the means to get out. I've seen so many people that I worked with personally over my lifetime that were hopeless completely turn their lives around because they got involved in, in the centre and involved in, in sport, etc. For sure, there was a learning curve of which the staff had to be uh, trained more so to equipment. The Steadward Centre hosted two training sessions for the, sp the staff in order to be aware of what the transition program was moving into the, into the fitness centre within the facility here. We did try when she was about 18 just transitioning on our own <laughs> to community and it wasn't as successful. We didn't stay long. It was just too overwhelming for her and it was too overwhelming for me. Having the transitions was awesome because when she was 16, 17, 18 I thought that having her participate at her community gym was maybe unrealistic. Here she is today going and enjoying it. So taking our structured program to a site and then engaging their staff um, through training sessions and kind of showing some of the, the tips and tricks and the, bringing the philosophies of APA into their centre. It made sense in tying in with the Steadward Centre to the sense that we knew that we were going to be able to seek options and make improvements throughout the facility to be more accommodating. The Alberta Human Rights Commission provided us an opportunity to work on the physical environment within the Greater Edmonton area. So through their support, we were able to conduct 25 accessibility audits on fitness centres, our close partners that we're working with. And these audits focused not only on physical access, but what kind of inclusion policies they have in these centres, what kind of professional support and training they provide to their staff to be able to assist individuals with disabilities. And in the end, it overall made us aware of what we needed to improve. The community readiness piece is where we go in and provide supports directly to the community. So we do programs like the Workout Buddies program, um, the Adaptive Physical Activity Symposium. We provide different outlets for the community to learn about what adaptive physical activity is. We are actually reducing barriers to fitness and community recreation that have been existing not just for one person, but for an entire community those large muscles and is usually through repetitive movements. Your purpose is to increase that heart rate and work at getting your body more efficient. Um, we're at the Savile Centre today. This is one of our partners that uh, we've worked really closely with over the last several years and uh, this just shows the level of partnership of being able to come in here and use this as a teaching facility for our students and things like the Workout Buddies program. He started off in classroom just teaching us um, different um, strategies on working out with the individual and then we came into the gym and we started working hands-on one-on-one with the individual. 
Our main goal in here is for them to be able to take a program that's been developed by the Stedward Centre and to understand that program and to understand what the participant is going through. The more people that are involved with this, the more vision people are going to have for the future. And that's the great thing about this course because it gives different adaptations across a wide variety of impairments really. So um, it doesn't matter who the individual you're working with, you should be able to take something from this class and modify it. Are you ready? Yeah? Okay. The fourth component of the Community Exercise Transition Model is a Community Opportunities component. And this is where we've worked really closely with the community to enhance opportunities available. So for example, we've worked closely with facilities to provide fee reduction programs to assist with m greater access into these community centres. We've also worked with our participants who have already transitioned on peer mentor programs and volunteer programs where they can come back into the Stedward Centre and work with the peers that they've been working out with prior to transition and this has been a really incredible opportunity for our participants to be involved in the full spectrum of programs that the Stedward Centre offers. This program has led us now, has led us away from the awkwardness per se. Anybody participating in the transition program is like a family in there to be brutally honest. As the transition program continued, an FES machine was incorporated into the equipment uh, within the facility. I got onto this machine and found out I actually could do something with my legs. I didn't even know it until the first day I was on this machine. Three years ago we developed FES in the community, so that's a very new initiative happening right now. FES uses surface electrodes to apply electricity to the skin and innervate muscles, so where it's previously paralyzed muscle that we're producing a functional movement, either cycling or rowing or arm bikes. When I come in Steadward, I even take it up another level because now I can get my legs working also, which is awesome. We've re recently started a provincial initiative getting the equipment out into the community so people can access it on their own and we're teaching them to use it independently either through aids or completely on their own. The more you can get this kind of an instrument into those different centers, the more people you're going to be able to draw or look after or help get better. Okay, I'm on a rowing machine. Uh, there's electrodes that have been placed on my legs here. And when I push this button, the top muscles kick in and I'm able to come back. And this all runs off a small nine volt battery. It doesn't take a lot of current. Our bodies are electrical, whether we realize it or not. The machine starts me pedaling and then I take over from the machine. I tell my each leg what to do. Sometimes I don't feel it when it actually does it, but I can see it results on the screen. He could have worked out in a more specialized centre as the Stedward Centre or a community centre and he chose a community centre. It's really great because there's a lot of choice within the transition program. They can choose what they want and they can choose to do some programs within a specialized centre or can choose to do it anywhere in the city. Being a paraplegic for just over two years and it was like right now when it happened. People say well it never happened to me but when it does, they sure reach out very quickly. I was a firefighter here in the city. I was a very, very active person. And then one little fall and I cracked a few bones in my neck and the next morning I'm laying there in bed and people are telling me what I can't do anymore. And it's like, quit telling me what I can't do. Tell me what I can do or show me how, you know? So I was pretty happy to find this place. I was never really conscious of exercising until I needed it. Spent three years in hospital. And that tends to change your, your um, point of view a little bit. I had no idea after one session I could sit here and actually pedal this machine. Once I give my legs a, a push to get going, I could actually pedal the machine. Like the machine shut off right now. And look at this. I mean, I, I had no clue I could do that. I was just like, wow, okay, now I'm really motivated. You know, 5.6 miles, Woohoo! There's volunteers here as well as paid staff. They're all great and they're needed. Uh, there's no way I'd get on this machine by myself. They definitely are here for more than just a paycheck. They're here to help and I'm sure in a lot of ways it's rewarding for them. Their loyalty and their commitment is what you can never teach a student. They have to 
develop that from in here and in here. I have a, a stepbrother who um, lived with a, a physical and cognitive impairment and that was always my plan was to um, make sure that he could become physically active and, and I think that has always kind of resonated and stuck with me is that we need to create opportunities for everyone. And the only way in which the centre has been able to continue to survive uh, over all of these years um, is because of the, the commitment and loyalty and sacrifices that uh, our staff like Bobby Joe and Karen and others before them and since them have been able to commit. I came into these programs thinking I was, you know, I could only do, you know, this much and, you know, never really pushing, pushing myself beyond that, but with uh, Kirsty and, and the other trainers that I've had, they showed me I can go way up there, and which I thought was impossible. When I started the centre, I got a couple of students involved, and then we hired them. A four-month practicum turned into an 11-year career. And then we made it part of our program that all of our internships took place there, and then they got hired, and then they got out and spread the word. Now the transition in the program's been going on long enough, so I'm starting to see that our professionals, or our students that have been coming through and working with us are in the community now. This individual has the training. We know that they have the experience, and it helps build our confidence, but it also helps build our participants' confidence. The Stubber Centre has always held, I think, a really unique place within the Canadian landscape because we've been providing adaptive physical activity and parasport for such a long time, you know, over 36 years. I mean, how long has it been now? Oh gosh, since 78. My goodness, it's been a long time. The success of the Stubber Centre has been this collective idea that we need to keep pushing. We need to keep asking questions. The approach has shifted as the context and the climate has shifted, but that the base idea of creating opportunity and supporting individuals to achieve their goals, be it athletic, be it fitness, the notion around being included, whatever it is, that has been the crux of helping or supporting individuals to achieve that goal. And it's developed uh, a certain type of empathy, a certain type of acceptance, that everybody's different and everybody has something to offer. We have to build on our successes, but we just can't, you know, keep looking back, you know. You can learn from the past, but you've got to, you've got to look and move forward.